Hello, Gold viewers. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC and Public Relations Manager and MC for the Gold Lactation Online Conference 2015. Welcome to my interview with Dr. Barbara Morrison. Welcome, Barbara. It's great to have you with us at Gold Lactation. Hey, it's great to be back. Well, right. as I uh, we were chatting uh, just a little bit before, um, how excited I am uh, to have you talking on this subject. And Barbara is going to be talking on understanding the prolactin receptor theory. Um, and uh, we were talking about how you know it seems like there is uh, little known about this, and how excited I was to have someone be with us for a gold lactation uh, conference and talking about this. So um, as you know, I've got a few questions for you, Barbara. So I'm just going to jump right in and uh, start with the top one here. Why, do you, why did you want to look at the prolactin receptor? Um, I had been reading and trying to understand it, but then looking at practice. And I didn't understand how the receptors got uploaded. Um, and in books like the, that by Peter Hartman and uh, Lawrence and, and even the Jan Reardon's book, there was they always mentioned this prolactin receptor, but not really how it worked. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was part of that whole exploration of, OK, it's got to be more than um, if the receptors aren't there within the alveoli, how do they get there? And what you know, why is the placenta progesterone important and things like that? So that's what kind of started me on the exploration. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's great. And so again, you know, just thinking about uh, the research that you were, you know, that you've been doing, were there things in the research that uh, surprised you when you were looking at it? I think Part of what surprised me is the complexity of it and how much, if you really think about the cascade that is occurring starting immediately after birth, how much we as healthcare providers are literally causing it not to happen appropriately. Right. So that when you talk about the um, insufficient milk syndrome, uh, many moms may just plain get it because we're not having them breastfeed enough. We're not having them do the skin-to-skin -skin care and things of that nature in the first 48 hours or so after birth. Yeah, there's a. I know there's a huge gap, you know, um, there, and there's a there's a lot of differencing opinions as well of what we need to be doing. Even when, you know, we're working in that field where we've got a lot of people being proactive about breastfeeding, but I I still feel like there's such a variance on what people are doing, from the passive to the very assertive, you know, types of behavior, um, you know, and how that's, and again, how that's impacting that uh, prolactin receptor. So finally, um, I'd love to know, do you think that there, do you think there's more that we don't know about this? And, you know, is there more research on the horizon? There is definitely more, because I still haven't answered my primary question, um, which has to do with, uh, exactly what is happening when the progesterone falls, um, you know, mm -hmm. what is that window we have that the, pro that the prolactin is up. Um, I did find something just last night that was saying that the prolactin is inhibited by the progesterone only as it relates to um, the making of or lactogenesis, but not as it relates to the changes that are occurring in the breast. And so there's a lot there that still, I th still needs to be looked at. However, or unfortunately, a majority of the research that's being done is related to prolactin's role in breast cancer. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, so, you know, so some of what I'm trying to glean is just isn't even necessarily on um, lactation. So yeah, there are, I think, a lot of things um, that, that we need to know and, and go back to appreciate the importance of that early time because the best I can figure is we're trying to catch prolactin when it's high, which is best after a vaginal birth. And um, the high levels of prolactin are what help to upregulate the prolactin receptors. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain more about that later. <laughs> Well, that's uh, you're, you're you're leaving me on the edge of my seat here, and I I know you don't want to give too much away, um, and and we don't want to give too much away either because um, 
um, I'm very excited to have you be part of our, our main conference this year. Um, and it sounds like what I'm hearing from you, Barbara, is that this is really taking you on a bit of a journey. Um, and you, you know that there's still more to be discovered. So I have to say that I'm really looking forward to being on this journey with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly, it needs to be tapped into. There's no doubt about it. And so thank you for you know, taking that, that wondrous step into something that there's little known about. And uh, like I said, we'll be looking forward to having you uh, as part of our main conference. Well, we have run out of time today. And uh, you could hear that Barbara and I could probably talk about this much longer. But uh, I'll leave you all uh, listening in and on the edge of your seats for some more as well. Thank you to our delegates and our listeners for listening in today. Uh, this has been Dr. Barbara Morrison and Fiona Langsharp at Gold Lactation. Thank you again, and bye-bye.